Beijing Declaration and Platform of Action. I wish to thank all the panelists and all the other participants who have contributed to this discussion. We will now, ladies and gentlemen, briefly suspend the meeting and reconvene a few minutes later to continue the high-level segment. I kindly ask you to remain in the room. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, we have to start again. Please take your seats. We will continue with the high-level segment. Please take your seats. And I have the honor of giving the floor to Mr. Nikos Christodoulidis, who is the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Cyprus. You have the floor, sir.
Madam President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a distinct honor for me to have the opportunity to address this August body, especially at this time when the United Nations is preparing to celebrate its 75th anniversary. The Human Rights Council is the natural epicenter of international dialogue and cooperation on all issues pertaining to the protection of human rights, their universality and indivisibility. The work of the Council, therefore, is all about setting the standards and pushing the boundaries in order to bring out the best in humanity and to help unleash the full potential for good in our societies to ensure that the future will be brighter than the past. Yet, in the year that will mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, our world finds itself faced with numerous threats, some new, some old, and some hybrid in nature that challenge and question our collective commitment to human rights. Armed conflicts, violent extremists, racism, intolerance, xenophobia, gender-based discrimination, poverty and rising inequality, lack of access to healthcare and education, climate change and affronts on privacy in the digital age are only a few of the questions that need to be addressed in this context. Investing in the education of young people on human rights is without doubt key in our bid to successfully address these challenges. Mindful of this, in Cyprus, we have designed and initiated actions and dialogues in our plans to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the UN that have a strong focus on the participation of youth representatives, while at the same time highlighting the importance of multilateralism in addressing global challenges. 2020 marks another important milestone in the evolution of human rights. The 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, a powerful source of guidance and inspiration in the promotion of women's rights. Achieving gender equality is the unfinished business of our time. Gender inequality is a universal problem with dire socioeconomic consequences and implications. In Cyprus, we have decided to actively mainstream the gender dimension in our, in our foreign policy as one of our priorities. And in this context, we have already started to undertake concrete initiatives and actions that strengthen respect for the human rights of women and girls on a national and regional level. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, geography is a destiny. The geographical location of Cyprus at the crossroad of three continents comes with many blessings. At the same time, though, our broader neighborhood has throughout history been fraught with challenges. This continued to be true in our days, as proven by the deeply concerning situation in the Eastern Mediterranean and the greater Middle East region. The upheaval and the flagrant violations of human rights that result from armed conflicts and terrorism continue to cause in Terralia the flow of migrants and refugees to Europe, especially via the Eastern Mediterranean route, as a result of which Cyprus now ranks first among European Union member states in first-time asylum applications received per capita for the third consecutive year in a row. In order to successfully tackle all regional challenges, countries in our neighborhood need to act decisively and collectively. It is in this context that Cyprus has established over the past few years, together with our neighboring countries, a series of minilateral cooperation mechanisms that are inclusive in nature and are based on a positive agenda with the aim of enhancing security, stability, and peace in the region for the benefit of all peoples. Madam President, in just a few days, the annual report of the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights on the question of human rights in Cyprus will be presented here 
under agenda item two. The mandate of this report stems from the mass human rights violations that have resulted from the 1974 military invasion and subsequent occupation by Turkey, 